Okay, so uh, now we want to a developer console is typically a specialized um, UI element which typically displays logs. So in this case, you'll know, be displaying logs from the logging mechanism, but also allows you to type in commands to extract information or uh, do uh, cheats or uh, well, cheats is the one I'm getting from uh, the source engine. You could hit developer console, hit SV underscore cheats one. You can set certain variables or do some specific information. That's what I want to basically be able to do. So <clears throat> using the basis of the log, at least. Uh, okay, what else would I really need? I need like um, some kind of command, command in infrastructure. I need a, hmm. I need to be able to route log information to like a, another class. And I also need a, another class that just accepts and can run arbitrary string commands in this case. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm not going to touch log quite yet. But what I'm going to do is like console or um, string command runner. Something like this. Something that, okay, get the very basics done and dusted. That allows uh, me to arbitrarily register and deregister commands from subsystems from other cl uh, classes easily. So uh, export. Oh, it's way too late in the morning. because what we're going to require is shared mutex I think and a uh, order map I think vector no, because if I use an unordered map, I can use the the um, the string as like a hash key. Well, by default, just make okay, just making things a bit easier for myself. In a function, it's a void in the standard uh, the string view. Let's say like that. This include an ordered map and a string view and a function all like that. We have the constructor, which I don't think would it even do anything. Whoops, uh, m string map, m. Uh, I don't think we really need that actually, because by default there's nothing to. Um, <clears throat> what I already have, uh, Jubin, Jabin, whatever. I'm going to be. I'm creating like a. a um, let me double check the. Yeah, it's supposed to be a developer console. So what I already have is a logging mechanism. I already have a log that. Uh, 
Like you can, depending on the category, you can uh, put, well, you can write log. Okay, you can write logs currently. It only goes to the standard output, the standard um, error output, I believe. Uh, yeah, standard error. What I want to do is also like uh, kind of combine to be able to also output not only to this to the standard output, but to an arbitrary class, which will become a develop, uh, like a developer console, which will also accept uh, string commands. Like in um, the best example I have is from like source engine games, where you'd be able to open up a developer console and then you'd be able to type in like, you know, SV underscore cheats one to like change the environment or run arbitrary things or, you know, whatever whatever is required um so in this case the idea would be well what i just actually just said <laughs> so right now i'm just i'm i'm creating a, a like a class that i already have like logging done i'm gonna have to augment that to be able to also like send that same output to this developer console thing but i also want to like have this separate class which is going to deal with the, the arbitrary um, where you can just send a string to, uh, you can, uh, arbitrary classes can register like string commands, such as like the SV underscore cheats and then the number. And then this class will have like a map of the commands and what to do every time you give it one of those. Uh, this is C++. Um, and C, mostly C++, the CPP files and stuff. <clears throat> okay, uh, so, what was I? Okay, I already got the map that I was going to put the old commands in, the string views, uh, registering of the commands, not a bool, but a bool. And register command, which is so the first one is the command name, I guess. And then the second thing will be the actual function that will be called at the time. Um, and function, I guess. And we also want the ability to deregister commands in case I don't know, systems systems come and go, turn on or off. Hmm. Yeah, it's best to have a deregister. And, and that would just be like the name. The command name. Uh, would it be no accept? I don't know if it's no exception. Uh the ability to actually run commands. Run commands. So it passes in the string. The whole thing together. Or is it there? Run command. String. Command. Call. Ah, just command for now. And I don't know. Ah, do I already need that? No, I don't. Okay, so that'll be the declaration. Let me get the source location. Get paste in that copyright. And I want the functions I would be working with. And then time for the definitions. Let's put this off to the side. Okay, shared mutex still can't be found. Or um, actually, let me add it to the compilation. So the registration of command, or yeah, let's just 
top to bottom. When we want to just add one, I imagine. Okay, so we need m sync dot. We're just doing an old fashioned mutex lock. Can I do a scope lock? I can do a scope lock. Of sync. So that'll automatically unlock. It'll lock it when it uh, grabs in. When this is created, it'll automatically wait until it can actually grab an exclusive lo uh, lock on the mutex. And then when this is uh, destroyed at the end, when it goes out of scope, when the call's finished, then it'll automatically release it. So that means all I need to do is basically add, eh, I guess that would. And command map dot insert. Command name and uh, function. Unclear on, probably not. Let me grab, open this. Um, an ordered map. It just inserts. Really? I thought. Oh, okay. Is it this way? See if it even compiles. No, it does not. Okay, first of all, it can't find shared mutex. Is it like is something like that? Just a wrong header. Yeah. Uh, need close up the class. That would mean that I need mutex here. I'll bet, because otherwise it won't be able to find. This guy, yeah. It just leaves no matching member for the call. Into standard string. So if I insert command name and function, that should work. Um, initializer this really okay can I just uh, uh, you do this then equals that yeah I can not really actually oh because I'm giving it a string view and it's expecting a string. Okay, my bad. It's not doing an automatic conversion. Right. Maybe not. No, yes, that was it. Do I, um, oh, but I do wanna make sure I'm not gonna clobber an already existing command. I will bet. So I want to try to do a find first, I'll bet. Find this. Is it like an exist or is it just a find? Returns an iterator, okay. So first of all, make sure and doesn't already exist. If it does, it will return false. It'll be like the only reason you'll ever return false from this. Otherwise, you'll return true. If uh, m command map dot well, if I want to use standard string, and string like that since I'm going to be using it more than one location. So if uh, find of command stream is not at the end of end command map, 
Okay, that means it already exists. And we just want to return false. Couldn't put it in because it already exists. We're not clobbering stuff. Because it's even worse. Otherwise, command string turn true. Really? I need to do... Okay. Can't go from string view to string without doing it explicitly. Okay. Deregistering. Uh, same thing almost. Uh, we get the scope block first. Then um, we do this, except if it is found, we want to erase. Return true. Else return false. And command map dot erase. Or actually almost. We want to auto um, iterator equals no search iterator equals that. If search search iterator is not equal to that. That is, it was found, erase it. And return true, otherwise return false. And then the last thing is command. Uh, hmm. I need to split the string up in uh, a couple of ways should it mm. first of all we need to make sure that there are none white space characters if we if we just get a, a large string of white space or tabs or enters or any other funky characters that should be a, just a no go so um, first, on white character, space, uh, something like that. Let's say it's at the end, none position. We we'll try to find it for standard size T? I don't know. Less than command dot size size of the string iterate up if I believe there's a standard is base of the current character returns Most. The first non space equals I and break. I just want to double check if is space. I'm not sure if it's like is like space as in is white space or just like the literal space. It's two definitions. I'll assume locale. Nope. Not the right one. Okay. Uh, checks if white space character. Space, form, feed, line, feed, character, turn, horizontal tab, and vertical tab. Vertical tab? Yeah. I, well, I guess there would have to be one. So this is any kind of white space, which is just what I'm looking for. So, uh, if... Uh, first, non space. If we couldn't find a non white space character, that just means there's no command here, so we just return straight up. Otherwise, 
I'm going to create another view of a string. It's going to be the substring of up to first non white space. So the first character that we found. And it's going to be find first of. Oh, from this point to the next. No, no, no. Maybe. Find first of. No, I need. I need a. I'm going to need a special function for this, aren't I? Second on. Ah, uh, okay, we need the same thing again here. We need to find the second non-white space. Second. First space. Second on space. Goes to the end of the command size. Otherwise, and it becomes so it's from first non space to <laughs> equals i minus first non space. Oh no, we'll do it uh, down here. Second non space, because this is the starting point and this is the number of characters. If I double check, actually, always double check substring. Count. Yeah, so it's from the posi from this guy to this guy. So you want to make sure it's uh, that. Actually. If we go to string, find first of, can we actually just start from another location? Oh no, but then it'll be like white space characters and stuff. I'll, if I just do like a space character, that's so, yeah, this is safer. Um, and this should be a bool actually, whether or not the command was run. Or should we just like eat up failures? No, never do that. Always return if possible. Boolean. Okay, we got the command. Now we want to um, sync dot lock uh, shared. So that multiple be multiple. Um, Actually, I'm not sure. Not sure if we, uh, we want to actually allow multiple commands to be run at once from a dev console. No, we probably shouldn't. We'll just do a standard mutex. I'm not gonna since like the dev console is for manual. It's for manual human intervention, human interaction. So it's slow, doesn't have to be, we're running one at a time at most. So actually we'll just, um, just be super safe like that. Let's go block of that. equals um, auto search iterator equals same as up here and 
insert string run equals search iterator not equal to math.end. If run is true, then we found it, so we run it. Second command. And we return a run. And scope lock will take care of us exiting out. Now I'm not sure. Oop, command name. Uh, no matching to find of standard string that I <laughs> that's the same thing down here okay we'll just make this a standard string then since I can't I don't even know why I... Okay. Okay. Real fun. This is a very strange usability between string and string view. I don't like it. Okay, now what I what I really need is to actually kind of have some kind of testing mechanism in for this. I can't just rely on just manually testing as I develop in this. All right. Okay. Uh, before I go anywhere else, export. Need to export these functions. So we want to make sure uh, we have algorithm here some for some reason. Why? Oh, uh, is space. We want a regular string included here, just to be safe. String command runner or command string runner. I should really, uh, I'm going to do it the other way around. Command string runner. That's a that it sounds better to my mind. Do 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 do. Command string runner. Okay, okay. And we've got to flip these guys as well. String runner, string runner, string runner. Do it that way. Ah, uh, cannot be found. Can 
the kind of name, command name, command call. That actually makes it a little bit more sense. Okay, now in engine, we're going to HPP. Run an empty function here for which is just gonna log something for a stream. It needs to take in a string view of the whole command call. So the name of the call will be do it now. And the function is that. Maybe not. Cannot convert to incomplete class. Avoid that. Really? No, it does take in. Declared use of command. Yes, I changed it to command call. Okay, that is actually valid. Even if um Let me actually just restart code. Maybe that's just maybe that's why it's just having so many trouble, so much trouble. Nope, it just it just can't figure it out. Like I do have. Wait a second. Who's, which, um, like, is like C++ guy running right now? Is that what's going on? Maybe. Hmm. Yeah, okay, that's probably it. IntelliSense. Just no, no. Why would I need five gigabytes for disable? Okay, let's reload. That's why I was getting errors all over the damn place. It's because oh, Microsoft's IntelliSense was running rather than Clang D. Oh, great. Thanks, Microsoft. Making sure that it doesn't really work that great. Now, now all this is just coming up properly. 
Like if I go to this declaration, yeah, now it finds it perfectly fine. Uh, if kind of find the definition of this guy, no, not quite. Whoops, you definition. Yes, now it finds now it finds it all. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Always turn off IntelliSense. Uh, okay. What does it do? It's going to actually test this. I registered the command. I didn't do any. I didn't actually put anything in. So, dot run command. Didn't work. Okay. Makes sense, I guess. Do, do, do. Okay, uh, second on space is zero. First on space is zero. Wait, hold on. Yes. No, because what I oh, what I want to do is find the net uh, find the next space. First token end. That makes a lot of our sense. Not equals zero. First token end equals that. Go, go, go. First token end is the end of the lot, which is just the end of everything, which makes sense. So command string is now that. It's going to find it. It's going to run it. Bam. Called the runner function. Fantastic. Now we add a bunch of uh, tabs and white spaces there. Mm-hmm. It just narrows it down to that. Tab tab, white spaces. Okay, it's just not quite gonna start this time. Second time's a charm. Yep. Red, yeah, okay, it's properly that. And then if we have just a slightly different, it will go through the process, but it won't actually find it. It'll just return false. Nice. Nice. Do I need a constructor? No. Destructor? No. That's... No, I don't think so. That's it. Just that That's the entirety of the class. Nice, small, simple. So we're going to actually rip it out of here. I don't want to actually have this here. Auxiliary. Hmm. hmm. I need test infrastructure. I really do. So I really the more stuff that gets that gets uh, put into this, the the harder, well, the less likely I'll be able to keep track of testing at all. And the more likely I'll make a change and break something. 
without having something to keep me honest. So, okay, I'll make that next. Number part seven, test infrastructure and tests. For the moment, finish up with the developer console. Hmm. Which means... Okay, for that to happen, okay, um, that, we don't want this, we want this, and this. This is the implementation of the command string runner. Implementation. That, that's it. That's the explanation. It's garbage as that is. Now I need the rework logs. I really. Mm, so I can put it into arbitrary locations. means I, I I'm I'm going to do something similar I guess to the command string runner right, I'm gonna have except this time I will use actually a mutex a shared mutex since this I know that this can definitely be called from multiple locations at once probably no keep everything in order like what's the time very no for the moment just keep it simple keep it simple stupid uh, a vector of we're going to create a sync system The idea is going to be you can inherit it. Logs won't actually go to the logger. The logger will pass them through to sync, which can be arbitrary implementations, which then actually do whatever is required for logs. So one can be a sync that goes, and it'll send it to all syncs that are uh, that are registered. So you can register and deregister syncs. Um, so I can like have a standard error output, uh, but when I do debugging in a certain specific area or have a certain class attached, I can attach a special log sync that puts it into a certain file or something. I don't know. Maybe I'll be able to, yeah, whatever. I'll figure it out. But what matters right now is I need the log sync for the moment. The possibilities are limitless. Inheritable, I'll need a virtual destruct. 
constructor, even if it's just basically default. Like that. And a couple of virtual. Actually, that's probably something I want to do. If, hmm. In case of fatal uh, errors, so I'll, uh, in case of fatal errors, things like streams, like st uh, to like standard output and s uh, error output, will require flushing. Basically, you'll need to flush whatever strings you have in the buffer out before you lose all total control from the application and maybe crash out. So I need an actual function in the log to like be able to call like you know during um, from internally maybe no in the log okay yes and no confusing I know I need an exception type or an exception call uh, equals zero. And this will basically be a copy of this one specifically. That. Like that. Mm -hmm. Include log category. Ah, uh, yes, you're right, because it should be the destructor. I don't think I actually have anything in here. It's just, it's just this. And of course, I have to be pure virtual. Then what will happen is with these guys, so include full log sync. Now that it's yeah, there yeah, without intelligence getting in the way, this Clang D actually properly colors and figures it out instantly. Um, there's no implementation here required, but we do need to change the logger to pass these things on. So first of all, it'll uh, msync. So it'll do another standard scoped lock. The mutex. Then it'll go through for auto. What is it? Auto pointer? They're pointers anyway, so iterator pointer sinks iterator log of uh, the same thing p category level message if um, level equals log level of fatal Then we're going to call each of these guys again. But it's going to be exception. Like that. In the very unlikely, like, can, uh, is there an unlikely? Uh, I don't know if uh, unlikely is likely. Can I just say like unlikely like that? 
unknown attribute. Really? It seems pretty known to me. Unless I'm supposed to know. There's no include. So we can just say this is unlikely because this is very unlikely to happen. So it'll probably optimize for the case where like it's just this and then it leaves. Hopefully. That's what, okay. Logger, exception. No, it'll just be on fatal. It'll be, so we can keep them, we can just keep literally what is effectively the one actual, because this one is just a variadic version of that. Yeah. Very simple class. Which would mean uh, down here, I need to create a test sync. So, sync for a C error. Where, hmm. Don't need that. Okay, well we do need these two guys. Let's grab the old line. Stick it in there. In case of exception, we just standard sear and we just flush it. So right now, these, okay, first of all, it's not going to compile until after I do that. These messages should not come back through at all. Yeah, there's no messages. If I then go into logger, whatever, instance. And say we want to, oh, I need to be able to actually register these syncs. That is something I do need, actually. Uh, it's less likely to be called, so. It's pretty simple. Do I need anything else? I think I just need, yeah. Sync. Deregister. Anything else I can apply? No accept const. Not really, uh, but I do need them to be exported, though. Grab those guys, put them down here. Again, standard scoped lock. We're doing this again. Always being careful. Since this will be multi-threaded in the end, probably. First check if it even exists. Oh, crap, this is... Um, This is a vector, not a, uh, hmm. Okay, if it's a vector, then we're going to just go th there. I can't use uh, that. Dang. Um, six, stop again.
if is the same as sync and return false. We're not gonna flubber again. Otherwise, we'll add it to the end. Place back, piece sync. And then we got basically kind of the opposite going on here. Okay, let's register the sync now that I can actually do that. Once we create a sync. So let's uh, use it to here and then we'll deregister. Well, let's just actually just use it until the end. Attribute unlikely ignored. Why? Okay, now it's coming back out the... Uh, the output's coming back. The log air output is coming back to this, the error output. Standard error. But there was a... Unknown attribute unlikely ignored. Oh, it's... It, really? Like, I'm pretty sure it's... Oh, it's not implemented yet, probably then, that's why. Right. Likely, likely and unlikely. Uh, yes, it, it, oh, it's Clang 12. Or GCC 9. Now I'm writing what, Clang 11, right? Or 10. What? Ooh, okay. Am I missing something? Is there like a newer version out that I'm not really aware of? Okay, so the latest re re uh, version is 11. Okay, so it's still in the dev stage, that's why. It's been submitted to the version 12. Uh, branch from SVN, but it's not actually in a release, and I don't even have this, even though it's been out for a couple of weeks. That's odd. I do have GCC, right? Uh, greater than version 9. I have version 10. Which means if I was to actually. Okay. I'm going to murder everything here. I'm going to change compilers. Just to see what's going on. Uh, see x x equals two plus plus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't think that does anything quite yet. Warnings. Do it. And yeah, okay, so GCC is throwing out a bunch of other things. Um, but it did not complain about the unlikely attribute. Missing field initializers. Oh, okay, because I didn't actually put them in. Uh, different side in this. Yeah, okay, you're right about that one. I'll actually come back through and fix these in a separate one later. Okay, uh, side thing over. We're going to go back to Clank just to be. Build. 
shared libraries on actually and export compile commands and clang 10 yeah Okay, where was I? Logging. Okay, right now, syncs work. The sync, the one sync works. Now, if we were to deregister it, like here, so it'll only have the entering main loop, but not the exiting. And indeed it does. It does work as expected. Very nice. Actually, mm -hmm. don't have that as part of that. I really don't think so. Um, this is this isn't really a library thing. It's the where we're outputting stuff. I'm gonna put it in here. See errors. Hmm. We'll have a standard out and we'll have a standard C uh, error. Like that. This is something that's only like really used in the one location, so I'm not going to be too bothered about it. Except to say, Instead of that, we we'll put it out to see out like that, and then we make sure if this in this case level is greater than or equal to it's just for errors. Standard out takes all of them, but this guy only accepts errors and below. If it's greater than, then just return. So he's out, standard out. He accepts everything. He only accepts errors and fatals messages. Yeah, and then we'll just kind of 
what where come on gotta stop closing the things I need do 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 We'll just we'll just use this one. Uh, out sync. Think so. Looks like it. But if we were to have like the standard air sync, it would accept neither of these because these are both infos. But if I was to have error, you know what? Actually, no, I'm not even going to, like, this is silly. If I'm just putting everything out to that, I'll just accept that. Call it a day. But just to be doubly sure that it does work, yeah. So we've changed it over to use a sync system. Documentation happens later. Offline. I'll stream standard out. For the sync, I'll probably want to rename that, but we'll do that in a separate commit. Engine, logger. Oh, don't know why we didn't need that. We don't. Yeah, that, 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 that does make sense. This is a shared object, right? Uh, yeah, SO. This, 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 this. We're going to add these to the commit. Yep. 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 Error, error. Out, out. Double check that it works. Yeah. Okay, do that. branch off the graphics one. Uh, 
Okay, now for the final piece, which would be the actual developer console. Let's put these guys together. export macros the sync that will inherit and the command string runner from earlier we inherit from both of them First of all, we have destruct. Okay, no, we won't bother with destructing quite yet, but we do need. We're gonna make uh, it a singleton. Um, we need to, of course, implement this. Final. We're not going to go any further than this on the developer console for the moment that I can think of. We'll change it later if required. Implementation of that. I didn't even make it virtual, did I? Do I want it to be virtual? Yes, I do want it to be virtual. So what I'm going to do, uh, this one just runs the command by itself. It doesn't do anything fancy with it. What I want the developer console to do is not only run the command, obviously, but what it's going to do first is it's going to just print that output right straight to the log. Well, the, well the, call, the command call may output things, it won't actually be outputting the call string, command string. So in the case of like this, like if I was to run this, like it doesn't actually, 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 actually it does. This is what I want to have happen, is I want this to actually be printed as part of the log, instead of it just disappearing into the ether. So I do want to override or final on top of that. Um, I don't need to synchronize this because both the command string runner and the log sync mechanisms, the logging mechanism is synchronized already. So yeah, we should be safe, should be. Mm, yeah. So, what do we need? Uh, uh, like a double ender queue, I think. A string? No, we're going to create a log tree. We're going to keep a bunch of extra information in this sync. We're going to have basically all three items. Just call it an entry. going to be saving basically all three of these guys. 
Except it's not a string view, it's going to be a string. Since we won't be able to hold on to what we've got. Q, D, Q, Deck, Deku. That is right, Deku. Deck, DQ, I don't know. And I'm going to need these. definition file paste the copyright notice in And then implementation. So, uh, static this. The global developer console in Singleton. And G developer console. Cancel whatever I accidentally pressed. Just log, we're just adding, okay. Start in place back. Do I have multiple logs? No, I don't. I only have the one global. Right, and no one else can create one because it's a private. No, it is public. So anyone can create a log. Ooh, yeah, okay, that is. All right, all right, all right, all right. For the time being, we're just gonna privatize it so that you can only have a singleton at the moment. The only one that can create this is itself through its little instance function. So it's going to create a new entry with uh, P category being well, basically that. Want a stringified version of the message. Right now we're just adding them forever. We don't actually have a limit on them. Uh, do I really want a limit to the, yeah, of course I want a limit to how many entries there are. Hmm, exception, there's nothing to actually do for an exception in this case. Uh, running command will do
Oh, 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 yes, this would actually be perfect, wouldn't it? Declare a new category, which is just private to this uh, file. Console command. No one else. Runtime default level is info. Compile level is info. And uh, the in, uh, it's info. And what we got? Command call. About that, and then we're going to have the actual. Then we call the uh, lower version of this command stream runner run command. Pass that on. Yeah, it's the same thing, but just with the added output there. Uh, I need to actually add it to be compiled for one thing. This is the wrong ordering. It's not. Static can only be specified inside the class. Yeah, okay. We'll uh, register it. Uh, we're going to print out these guys, then we'll um, function that does nothing. We'll register that as console register command okay and to find reference to these guys I thought I did add full export why? Um, okay. In function info developer console, there's an undefined reference to the V table for itself. Do I have to like export the actual class or something? Really? Maybe I do then. That's not great. Hmm. Why these and not logs? Oh, because logsync doesn't actually have any variables. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll just export the classes instead of the actual functions then. If that'll uh, satisfy you. And it will. Okay. I'm sure Windows is going to have a fit over that one, but wow. 
whatever. Okay, uh, what was I doing? Engine. Reverse the command, register the sync. We now want to do actually a call. We'll make a call of um, run command. Only one of these actually should be, you know what? Only one of these should come through, which will be the second one. And then it'll just do what? It's coming back out through the console command info. Then it calls that one on the second one. Mm -hmm. Seems to be working okay. I probably want to make a minor adjustment where if it can't, if not, if it didn't actually find the command the run, then we're going to faux log this warning. Return false. Otherwise, it returns true. Let's give that one a see how that comes out with. Yeah, okay. It's not too bad. Okay, we'll do that, we'll do this. We have the developer console with the standard error out of sync. We'll register it like that. That's as far as any of that goes. No, yes. We need to export, change the export to the class instead of just the functions. Same with this guy. Added the file be compiled and added the actual compilation file. We've got the guards, we've got the guards, double in a Q, entries. Ah, yes, I do want to limit the maximum number of entries, max entries you can have. I guess we can actually add that as part of the... Uh, actually, that's a question is if if I actually did this and then I move the exports back down to just whoops just the functions again is that fine because it's the v table it still can't find the v table Hmm. Okay, back it up. Uh, 
Um, And then we have some functions down here. It's just size t max entries. Just returns it. Where you can get and set the number. Close those to the right. Scope it up. Now we do Run command exception. Ah, here. If and entries dot does it even track the size? It does track the size. Driven. It's greater than that. Dot erase. Can I do like a pop? Front? It's added to the back, so pop the front. Pop the oldest entry. Hmm. Actually, no, we'll do a while loop because I don't want to, I, when I change this value, if I change it to less, I don't have like uh, access to the, because this is going to be coming through the synchronized, um, through the mutex that comes from the log sync. So this is always synchronized. This is safe to do here. To, to oh no but if I want to access this list I'm going to need a separate separate access to it crap hmm. Hmm. okay just an, just another another sync Can I do this as a shared mutex no yes I could no keep it simple Keep it bloody simple. And then this is limited to one. this do that same deal here and then while basically this but while pop front us until we get back down to the new max entry size. It's size T, so the minimum it's zero, maximum is ungodly high. Yeah. Okay. Except for no matching constructor for initialization. Ah, yes, that's true. Okay, if it's OK, 
Okay. No, none of that. Oh, because it is. Hmm. It should be private. For the moment, it'll be this. And this will be, I don't know, some, a large number, 200 entries, 250 entries. That's the storage of the console by default. That looks, all right, calling private constructor of, yes, you are right. Probably shouldn't be relying on singletons as much as I am. But that's a later problem, as always. He's already added from the header. Don't know why you're here. Builds none. Oh, hello. Um, oh, yes, yes, he shouldn't return anything. Because he's a setter. See how this uh, rolls. So we're going to do. I'm going to create a quick little. Of him, we'll do that. Right now, there'll be two entries. Oh, right, yeah, it, I need to exit out of the uh, window loop. It's got two entries, right? Yes, two entries. Let's uh, stick a bunch more in there. entries okay now if I change this up to be here max entries I will say it's a limit of four he should only have four he does and the same thing should apply here we do it after the creation of all the log entries. That will pair it right back down to four. And it does. Okay. I'm going to need a visual representation for this later, of course. That's pretty much the very basics of the mechanics of the developer console. I have to do the visual stuff later. Yeah. 
Hmm. And of course the documentation. Okay. I'll just commit this and I'll call it a night. It's three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Just a little quick once over. Just within the limit. Okay. I'm going to call it there for now. Cheers.